All right, everybody. Case two. This is going to be a good one. Um, I did learn from my mistakes. I changed the uh, resources or the uh, works cited for this one, so you can't cheat on this one. Uh, does anybody have an idea of what we are looking at here? It's a newborn. Uh, a newborn with a defect on the top of their head. Uh, looks midline to me. So what is it? This is going to be cutis a- oh, here we go. Here is, uh, here's my citation for that picture. Uh, this is cutis aplasia, also known as aplasia cutis congenita, uh, meaning that it'll be at birth. What it is, is it is a congenital bald spot. Uh, and that's caused by, uh, let's, let's move back here. It's where you have an absent epidermal layer, um, of the skin. And you can tell here, here we go. Um, it's going to be a focal lesion, uh, just about midline in the scalp. Uh, it is, oh, I hear, uh, have that it is not caused by amniocentesis or interuterine monitoring of any sorts. Um, that's, that's a common misbelief. Um, parents may often wonder about it. Uh, but it is caused by congenital issue, not monitoring, or not a, not a physician-induced uh, problem. So... It's uh, caused by multiple things. Uh, notice how the, the monitoring is not one of these associations. Uh, it is idiopathic. However, it can also be associated with any of these symptom, uh, syndromes. Um, out of these four below idiopathic, um, kind of off the wall, if you ask me. I, I had to do some research into these. Uh, the one that I was most familiar with was Patau syndrome. Um, but, but all these others, um, I definitely needed a little refreshing on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be covering all four of these diseases. Um, I, I want you to keep in mind that all four of these have cutis aplasia associated with them. That's, that's why I am linking these in. Um, otherwise it, it's great information to learn, uh, the basics of these diseases. So let's start with Johansson blizzard syndrome. Johansson blizzard syndrome is an autosomal recessive inheritance, meaning that both parents will have to have a recessive allele and pass it along. Um, it is caused by a mutation on the UBR1 gene. So I had no clue what this is. I had to look it up. It's the ubiquitin uh, gene, um, and, and it's involved in the ubiquitination process, which is used to flag and uh, ultimately break down proteins in the body. So everybody has a ubiquitin system system in them, uh, and that's how you get rid of used proteins within the body. Uh, what it presents with is going to be abnormalities in the pancreas, nose, scalp, and the brain. So I kind of broke down here what each what each uh, subunit is. Um, I'll kind of try and hit the main ones. For the pancreas, uh, with someone with JB syndrome, uh, you'll notice that the pancreas has mainly an exocrine insufficiency, meaning uh, the digestive juices, uh, the pancreatic juices, uh, won't be as efficient, or they may be absent. So you're going to have to take supplements uh, to compensate for that. Also, you'll have an endocrine deficiency, meaning the insulin glucagon pathway uh, through the islet of Langerhans cells. For the nose, you'll have hypoplasia of the ala of the nose, and the ala is going to be the wing or uh, the like lateral nair of the nose. Uh, also, you have some brain problems, uh, some hearing problems, and then finally we get to the craniofacial defects. That's the one that kind of ties it into the cutis aplasia, uh, the mix that we're going for. Um, and then treatment, you repl again, you replace the pancreatic enzyme surgery, hearing aid. It's symptomatic relief at this point. So that's Johansson blizzard syndrome. Let's move on to Adams-Oliver syndrome. Uh, this is another one that has cutis aplasia, and what it is, is it's a controversial, um, right now we really don't know how the genetics work. Um, some say autosomal dominant, some say recessive, but what is known is typically these three genes, the ARHGAP31 gene, and these genes um, are associated with it. It is known to be congenital, not, a, not an acquired disease due to any virus or vaccine or any sort. So it is congenital. Um, the defects that you'll see here are going to be scalp defects again. Um, what, some of those being cutis aplasia. You'll see transverse anomalies in the limbs, 
uh, skin, cardiovascular system. Uh, the one that I was most familiar with was Patau syndrome, uh, commonly known as trisomy 13. Um, there are different forms to it, however the most common is going to be an extra set of the 13th chromosome, uh, and that's going to be caused by non-disjunction during meiosis, so uh, reproductive cell division instead of mitosis, which is going to be mature cell division. So during meiosis, you're going to get an extra 13th chromosome uh, formed, uh, leading to three instead of two sets. Uh, the increased risk for age, that also is associated with Down syndrome. Um, so Patau syndrome, trisomy 13, the trisomies uh, all um, increase risk due to the non-disjunction during meiosis. So they increase with age. Some of the symptoms that you'll see in Patau syndrome, uh, nervous system problems, of course, uh, microcephaly, mental retardation. You'll see the polydactyly, the, the fingers, uh, low set ears, that's common as well urogenital issues, heart defects, um, a lot of the things that you would also kind of tend to associate with Down syndrome. However, main difference is Patau syndrome trisomy 13 is non-conducive to life, typically after the first year, um, while Down syndrome you have a much later uh, lifetime expectancy in some cases. Uh, the last one, okay, wolf hirschhorn syndrome. Uh, this one is due to a depletion of part of the short arm of chromosome 4. So what do I say by short arm? Well, that's the P arm. So each chromosome has both a long and a short arm. Uh, a P arm stands for the short arm. I think of it P for petite. So the petite arm of chromosome 4, uh, gets part of it gets deleted. Um, and then the Q would be the long arm, but that's not what we're talking about right now. So some of the symptoms that we see uh, would be craniofacial phenotypes, um, and I listed here everything that you may see. Um, and then also, I, I just realized that muscle hypotonia and heart defects are not in the craniofacial phenotypes, but those are also symptoms you may see as well. And then uh, also, last bullet point, um, not quite sure on the citation of this, but according to Wiki, it says that you may see immunoglobulin deficiency, so your immune system may be compromised, or an IgA deficiency as well, which would be a subtype of the immunoglobulin deficiency. Uh, this is where I got most of my information. The rest was uh, learned, of course, through my education, through medical school. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, hit like if you found this useful, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much.